As hordes of rioters ran through the Capitol, chanting, hang Mike Pence, pro-Trump lawyer John Eastman emailed an aide to the former vice president blaming Pence for the insurrection. The Washington Post reports Eastman, who penned a step-by-step -step guide on how then-President Trump could stay in power, blamed Pence for the Capitol riot because he refused to block certification of Joe Biden's win. Eastman wrote in part, quote, the siege is because you and your boss did not do what was necessary to allow this to be aired in a public way so that the American people can see for themselves what happened. The Post continues, Pence's chief counsel included Eastman's emailed remarks in a draft opinion article about Trump's outside legal team that he wrote later in January because ultimate, but ultimately chose not to publish. NBC News has not seen a draft article or email. Eastman confirmed the emails and interviews with the Post, but denied that he was blaming. Well, yes, but, but, what? He, but he did. He said he's not blaming Pence. You read he, them. This guy just keeps lying. He tries to over. He tries to help Donald Trump overthrow the rightful uh, government of the United States of America. Try to overthrow an election where 150 million plus people voted, and then he says he didn't mean to do it, and then he just said he wasn't blaming Mike Pence for. Who does like, that sound like? We've got the email. I know. Like, we've read the email. This is very clear, Mika, that that's exactly what he's doing. He's blaming Mike Pence for, for not committing sedition against the United States of America and, and not stopping a constitutional act that is required by the United States Constitution. The definition of sedition, this guy just keeps looking. I'll use the word. I'll use it comfortably because I'm in the right here. He keeps looking more deplorable by the day. Yeah. If somebody, here's the deal. If somebody tries to overthrow the United States government, tries to undermine a rightful, free presidential election, you can call them deplorable. Well, and Joe, there's a number of people. I mean, Vice President Mike Pence calls January 6th another day in January. Really? And the guy was like looking and asking for advice on how to do it. This is all, I guess what's, what's stunning is how long it's taking for us to come to agreement on what happened here. Oh, we're still learning. And the reason we're still learning is because uh, the Republican Party, almost everybody in the Republican Party decided, Mika, they were going to stand in the way of a transparent, bipartisan, bicameral hearing. Joe Manchin was begging. Republicans, begging Republicans, give me 10 Republicans so we can have a transparent, bipartisan, bicameral investigation on what happened on January 6th. Republicans want to cover it up. They don't want you to know. A spokesman for former President Trump did not respond to a Washington Post request for comment. And more from Eastman. Just four days before the attack of the Capitol, John Eastman claimed on Steve Bannon's podcast that if then Vice President Pence had, quote, courage and spine, he could keep Trump in the White House. Take a listen. Are we to assume that this is going to be a climactic battle that's going to take place this week about the very question of the constitutionality of the Electoral Count Act of 1877? Well, I think a lot of that depends on the courage and the spine of the individuals involved. Would you be, that'd be a nice way to say a guy named Mike, uh, Vice President Mike Pence? Yes. Let's bring in right now congressional correspondent for The Washington Post and author of the early 202 newsletter, Jackie Alamany. She was one of the reporters of The Post's news story on Eastman's email to Pence's team during the Capitol attack. Jackie, Steve Bannon's podcast, why that's just becoming a veritable cornucopia really for investigators on January the 6th. A lot to dig in there, but the, the article, your article also, so much uh, to, to sift through. What, what are some of the more important elements that readers and members of the committee need to pay attention to? Yeah, Joe, we did uncover a lot of new details that we previously didn't know about January 6th, but I'm actually really glad you guys played that clip because there are also so many public points here that already show and put together uh, and, cre and create this picture of the extreme pressure campaign that these people were saying very publicly ahead of January 6th, on January 6th, after January 6th, uh, that 
should have raised a number of red flags, but we found even more pressure points that were happening behind the scenes privately that I think offer new insight into the mindsets of some of the key players that were under duress during a time where American democracy was really pushed to the brink. Um, you mentioned the first email that uh, that John Eastman, um, Trump's outside lawyer, had sent to Greg Jacob Pence's counsel while they were under siege. You read that quote out loud that the siege is because you and your boss did not do what was necessary. But there was another email, a number of emails sent during that time period, and another one sent around 8 p.m. after Pence had already gone back to the Senate floor, after the bloodshed, after the violence that everyone saw play out on national television, where Eastman sent another email to Jacob uh, asking him to again uh, dispute the electoral certification because he argued in this email um, that Pence had already violated the Electoral Count Act because uh, the debate had gone longer than two hours. And so Pence could still do his duty, uh, what he owed to Trump, and uh, try to halt the electoral certification and send things back to the state legislatures. So there were an astounding number of emails that were happening again during this siege, which uh, John Eastman also mocked to us when he was on the phone confirming the, a number of these emails emails that he sent uh, throughout this violent day in American history. Wow. Jackie, uh, thank you very much for your reporting on that. Elise, uh, I, I, there's Elise, I, Elise has a question, I think. Elise Jordan, jump in. Jackie, this has just gotten so out of control by this point. Are you, what are you hearing from people like Eastman that are going to be you know, probably implicated if they do have to testify, are people starting to get nervous that, hey, maybe they have some culpability here because they have behaved in such egregious ways and have been just so clairvoyant in how they have acted about January 6th? That's a good question, Elise. Uh, and I think there's sort of two tracks here. Some people who are voluntarily cooperating with the committee who want to present as, and provide as much information as possible to help create a comprehensive accord of this day and the events leading up to the day to prevent it from happening again. And then there are people like John Eastman, who are unrepentant, not cooperative, who are likely, he's supposed to, expected to be subpoenaed by the January 6th committee uh, investigating the insurrection um, this week or next week, uh, who continue to publicly double down on their claims um, and uh, propagate them. There is, a, I think, a sense here and a feeling, you know, pe from people like Steve Bannon and John Eastman, um, that this is just the start. This was the first failed attempt. And if you replicate this memo, uh, you know, those two memos that John Eastman had provided to Trump's outside legal team, that they can ultimately be successful in um, actually following through on these unsubstantiated claims of electoral fraud in 2022 and 2024. These are people who are not going to cooperate with the committee and who actually feel like this, uh, all of this, you know, lit relitigation of what happened on January 6th and this press coverage is actually good for business and good for their cause. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.